Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have a little bit of a different video for you all. I recently got this, the official Witcher cookbook. So what I thought I would do is I would end up making one of the recipes from this book, film it, and then share it with all of you. Let's dive in. And here is the recipe. So what I'm going to be making is the Svorlag. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but Svorlag Trapper Meat Patties. And then they have a little picture of that's what it's supposed to look like. Let's see if I can recreate that and then see how it tastes. Okay, so the first things we need is one medium onion. I've already peeled it, but I need to chop it. And then two cloves of garlic. So let's chop this stuff up and then we'll throw it in the skillet. Okay, and then we pop the onions right into the skillet. And then the same thing with the two cloves of garlic. Okay, and then chop up the garlic. And then this goes in the pan with the onions. Okay. Now we'll add a touch of vegetable oil to this, just so it doesn't stick, like so. And now we'll get this on the burner and saute it up. Okay, we got this stuff on the burner, turn that on and mix it together. And we just want this stuff to get soft. So probably cook it for just a couple of minutes. Then I'm just gonna add a touch of salt. Not too much though. Give this a good mix, because we don't want this to burn. Okay, you can see that's starting to look pretty good. The onions are looking nice and loose and translucent. So now we will add about three ounces of spinach, which I'm not much to measure. I'm going to say that's about three ounces because that's about one third of this pack. And we'll just give this a couple more minutes, turn the heat up a little bit more until the spinach has shriveled up a little bit and it's nice and soft as well. You can see it's already starting to shrivel up. It really doesn't take too long, probably four to five minutes. Maybe not even that long. <laughs> it's already looking kind of done. I'm gonna add a little bit more spinach. Yeah, I'll add just a little bit more spinach because it does cook down quite a bit. Okay, and this is starting to look good. So we'll turn the heat off and we'll get this off of the burner and into a separate bowl. All right, and this can just go right in this bowl where it will sit for a little while as we take care of the next couple steps. Looks good. Okay, for the next step, we got some Brussels sprouts. Whoops, which are falling out. Apparently this is already open. <laughs> we got some Brussels sprouts. So what we need to do is trim these a little bit, take out the outer layer since that's usually a little rough, clean them up, and then we're gonna boil these for about three minutes. So let's chop these up. Okay, and you need about 200 grams of Brussels sprouts. Again, I don't really measure, so I'm just eyeballing it, but this looks like roughly 200 grams. Whew. Now the next step to prepping the Brussels sprouts is you just want to take off the outer layer of the stump. Just like that, that way it looks fresher. 
and then do that for all of the Brussels sprouts and then we'll get them into some boiling water. Okay, we got our boiling water. Ooh. So now we will put the Brussels sprouts in and give them ooh, uh, just a couple of minutes. So yeah, we'll just give these three minutes. Just make sure they're all under the water if possible. All right, once the Brussels sprouts are done, turn off the heat and strain the water. And then we'll just let those sit off to the side. And then we'll start working on the meat. Okay, in the pot where we had the onions and garlic and spinach, we are now gonna add the meat. So we need about 300 grams of ground beef, which is probably about that much. And 200 grams of pork, which is probably about that much. I'll add a little bit more beef. Okay, next, we need to add about five tablespoons of breadcrumbs. That's probably about five tablespoons. And then we'll add five tablespoons of Parmesan cheese. Help if I open this. That's probably roughly five tablespoons. Add about a teaspoon of salt. If I can get it to come out. About that. Then we'll add a touch of pepper. Unfortunately, I don't have freshly ground pepper, but this stuff should work just fine. And now we mix it thoroughly together. Just get your hands dirty, just like this. There we go. Okay, and then that is what it should roughly look like. And now what you wanna do is you wanna form these into little flat meatballs, about two inches in size, and then roll them in some fresh flour, and then we'll get it back on the skillet and cook them up. So let's roll these up. So about that size, you see I have it roughly flat, but about two inches. And then we'll take this and roll it in the flour. And voila, then we'll just put these on our skillet and cook them up. Okay, and we'll start cooking the meat. I'm using the same skillet. Ooh, I'm just gonna add a little bit of vegetable oil to this. That way they don't stick. All right, and then as the meat cooks, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you keep flipping them. That way they cook evenly. It's be easier if I had a bigger pan, but that's okay. Okay, and while the meat is cooking, I'm taking the Brussels sprouts and just cutting them in half like that. And do that with all of the Brussels sprouts. Okay, and then once it's been about three minutes per side, add some water. And cover it. And then we'll let that go for another about three or five minutes, three to five minutes. Now we can work on the jam. So you should technically want to use fresh blueberries. I unfortunately don't have that. So I just have these frozen blueberries. And I'm just going to mash these up just a little bit. They are still a little frozen, so it's kind of hard. <laughs> I just do a, a very light mashing. Yeah, something like that. It's about one cup of blueberries. 
And then you'll just want to put this into a pan, or a pot, excuse me, like so. And then add about, we'll say, two tablespoons of plum jam to the blueberries. About that much should be fine. A little bit of butter, maybe about a teaspoon. Throw that in there. Add a little bit of salt. And some honey. It'd be better if you have fresh honey, but this should work fine. We'll just add a tiny bit of this. About that much, because it's already gonna be sweet. All right, the meat is looking pretty well done, so we'll get this off the burner. Ouch. And just put them on a plate and get them out of your way for right now. Okay, and then the last step for the Brussels sprouts. Add a little bit of vegetable oil back into the pan that the meat was cooking in. And just put the Brussels sprouts right in there with about one teaspoon of butter as well. All right, and then we just wanna cook these up until they start getting a little bit brown. Give it a good toss like that, keep them moving so they do not burn. We'll add about one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, a little bit like that. And about one teaspoon of honey about that much and stir it in make sure everything gets a nice coat and we're gonna add just a splash of water about that much and then cover it let it finish cooking and now the last step to get the jam ready I already have all the ingredients mixed together, so we'll heat this up. And the jam should take about 10 minutes or until it has thickened up. Okay, and the Brussels sprouts are done, so we can get these off of the heat. Okay, and then once the jam is done and it's thickened up, Plate it with the Brussels sprouts in the meat and enjoy the food. Okay, here is the finished product. We have the meat, Brussels sprouts, and the jam. Let's see what the Brussels sprouts taste like first. It's pretty good. Okay. And then we'll try the meat. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's very good. Well, let's try a little bit of this jam as well. Ooh, that's very good. Maybe try some of the jam with the Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing. <clears throat> so yeah, like I said, I got this recipe from this, the official Witcher cookbook. It has a lot, a lot of recipes in it, at least a couple dozen, maybe even close to 50 recipes total in this book. What's really interesting about this though, is, you know, it's obviously a cookbook, but there's also a story incorporated into all of these recipes as well because it follows this woman as she travels to, you know, different places in the continent and learns about all the different recipes. And then she essentially wrote them down for us to, uh, to try. So yeah, this is a, uh, if you're a fan of the Witcher book series, the television series, the video game series, I definitely recommend checking this out. 
I mean, I absolutely love this meal. I think it's really fantastic. And this is the only one I've tried so far. There's a lot more in here that I would like to try in the future. But I also really like all the artwork that they included in this as well. Really, really well done. But yeah, that's it for right now. If you all want me to try making another recipe in the future from this book, Definitely let me know um, because that is something I would like to do. This was really fun for me to do and I know it is a little bit different from my normal YouTube videos, but yeah, let me know what you all think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Oh, and one more thing. So my one-year-old who's very picky with food as all one-year-olds are actually really enjoyed this meal. He doesn't eat much meat, but that meat he actually ate and he really enjoyed it and he really loved the plum jam as well. So, you know, high praise from him.